Right, well, we've done the drum beat and you've done some chords and now it's time to look at that bass line, which is a little bit more complicated. The video objectives here um, understand that the bass clef is different to the treble clef and understand that note lengths can be changed if it's got a dot after it. And also, what are beams? So here's the first uh, three bars of the bass line. Now, in terms of working out what the notes are, it's a system that you're similar with, but it's slightly different. Bass is always lower in pitch, so we need the stave to be, to be able to go lower. For that reason, we use this thing called a bass clef, which looks like this at the beginning of the stave. That tells us that it's lower in pitch. Now, to work out these notes, you could use the key on the sheet or you could work out your own system. But please note that the every good boy deserves football system does not work for the bass clef because the letters are different. Also, you might see that some of these notes go really high uh, above the bass clef. To work those out, you need to work your way up the lines and the spaces and you use the alphabet to find out what the letters are. Now I can give you a clue. See if you can spot a really logical pattern to these high notes up here um, that just makes it 10 times easier. It's, it's very simple. But see if you can work that out for yourselves. Now, once you've got the note letters, it's time to look at the rhythm, which is a little bit more complicated. But we'll start with the easy ones. Some of these notes are joined together with a single beam. Uh, like this, this one here is joined together by a single beam, so is that. Uh, it looks like that. Now, it doesn't matter if it's upside down, it still has the same meaning. And basically what that is, that's two note heads with a single tail, but they're joined together. And the tail snaps up, merges together to become what we call a beam. So basically, these are two eighth notes together, which makes burger in the Rhythm Cafe. Burger, 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 burger. So what's with these dots and why do some of them have uh, these double beams? These are notes I'm talking about here. Um, let's get the pen. So that's one, for example. There's a dot here and there's a double beam here. What does that mean? Well, let me tell you. When you put a dot after the note, it increases the length of that note by half its own value. So what you've got there is a note head with a single beam. Now you know from the last video that that means an eighth note, but it's got a dot after it. So it has to have half of its value added again. So that is another 16th note. So it's an eighth note plus a 16th note. Another way of looking at it is that it actually lasts for three 16th notes. I'm going to go to Logic now, and you can see what that looks like. Switch over. Okay, get the mouse, the pencil tool. Right, so there, I've already made that last three sixteenths long. This leaves us with one note that has a double beam on it, this note here. Well, a double beam is exactly the same as a note head with a double tail, like that. Now, hopefully you recognise that. That is a single 16th note. That means, in logic, it will look like this. So, three 16ths and a single 16th. The score, yeah, it's quite big, but it's the same thing. It's a dotted note there with a single beam and the note here with a double beam. Now notice that the, what that means is that it finishes off the whole beat. That's why we beam notes together. The eye sees it as a beam and it just knows that the whole thing fits into one whole beat. Now I haven't put in the right notes and that's deliberate because I'd like you to work out what the notes are but that is what the rhythm will look like. Good luck.